Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity to address this honorable house on my comments on the 2022 budget. And uh, to start that, I would like to congratulate the Honorable Minister, Dr. Singh, and his team at the Ministry of Finance for the great work they have put in to deliver in this budget. But Mr. Speaker, I want to address some of the comments made by the two speakers from the opposition side this morning. The first thing that I want to speak of is that they tend to evoke in their speeches God. I heard the Honorable Vince Roy spoke about a passage in the Bible, and I can quote passages too, Mr. Speaker. So I reference John 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I want to explain that passage, that reference as well. I want to reference the seismic destruction that the APMU government left in the trails that we have to remedy. Let me go through and explain how they have destroyed this country from the very fabric. That is why I use the word seismic destruction. The closure of the Sugar Estate to put 7,000 people out of work was to put people at a diminished position where men cannot go home to their wives and say, I brought home income for the family. They have taken back lands from the forestry sector and shut that down, taxing even to the shingles that you use to do fences for your yard. That is the second thing. The third thing is a number of taxes. They tax the life blood out of people over 200 tax. They have changed the schedule in the Value Added Tax Act to make sure that the items that were zero rated, they put on taxes on them. They have also weaponized the Guyana Revenue Authority to go after and audit people, audit people in the private sector and increase their assessments and run them into bankruptcy. They have also created the sum effects with all of these actions that no new investor came in the, into the period that they were in government. No person came. Mr. Speaker, in colloquial language, what they have done is lash people part. That is what you see it in the countryside. They lash people part. Lash your part. Thank you, Honorable Member. So they themselves like to quote numbers. We can quote numbers and verses from the Bible too. I also heard the first speaker talk about it is this budget is for big boys and private sector. We have no regret, shame, or distance from the private sector. I want to speak to this matter. Mr. Speaker, the private sector employs 65% of the working population. And that, I will direct you to page 19 of the Guyana Labor Survey was done in May 2021, May 2021. That labor survey done by the Bureau of Stati Statistics says that 65% of persons that are employed are from the private sector. So out of 251,000 jobs, 163,047 jobs, the private sector put that in the economy. So if you have a budget and it doesn't address that 163,000 workers and the companies they work for, then the budget is a misfit. But this budget that we have put together here address that exact thing, create jobs and also expand the private sector. Mr. Speaker, the public sector have around 57,000 jobs, and not-for-profit organizations have about 30,000 jobs. And that make up the total workforce in Guyana. So to say that is a private sector bu budget is a weak argument on their part. I want to also say, if you look at the estimates that the Honorable Minister presented, that Dr. Ashley said, you check table two. Table 2A and B of that estimate, and you will see a couple of numbers, and I want to point you to those. The first thing 
is that the income tax from, from, from the private sector is what the GRA received to be $89 billion from companies alone. Private sector pay taxes so that government can spend money into public initiatives. Import duties, about $27.5 billion in import duties. They also pay VAT on imports, about $26.3 billion. Excise tax on imports, about $40.5 billion. So the private sector pays into the government coffers, taxes and fees that we then use to program on a budget. So the argument again that is a tie, that the, for the big boys and so it's, it's, it's a weak at best argument by the opposition. Mr. Speaker, I want to address some of the issues raised by the Honorable Jurita Finance in her presentation. The first thing they spoke about was non-oil GDP of 4.6. I don't know if we don't understand economics or we don't know how to analyze an economy, but if you're going to speak on the economy, at least recognize realities. When the budget was prepared for 2021, nobody could have dreamed or had a glass ball, they could have peeped in and see that you would have a flood. That was not a 100 year event, it was a 1000 year event. The entire country was flooded. You don't look into a glass ball and say, oh, we, we expect a flood. It is a natural occurrence that we have to deal with, which give rise to a whole host of ailments. She spoke about sugar being down. What she didn't understand is 35% of the standing cane was destroyed. 4,300 hectares of cane was destroyed. She doesn't understand that. And they don't understand, but they come and they grandstand and they speak. They have to read. She should have read the budget, the honorable member. Should have read the budget as she accused my, my, my colleague. Go ahead, Go ahead. They spoke about GDP, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, nowhere in this God-given art, nowhere you can find a country that projects 4 to 7.5 growth in a GDP. Nowhere looks, turn, brick, run down in a rabbit hole. You cannot find it. Guyana projects 4 to 7.5 percent GDP. And we have just closed the year with 19.9%. 19.9% we just closed the year economic growth. Three countries in the world can, can claim that kind of growth. Three. The non-oil economy grew by, it grew by 4.6%. What you all have, what you all have is a weak analysis of the economy. A very weak and novice, novice analysis of the economy. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak some more about the matters that she raised about inflation. Again, this bunker strategy that the AP and UAFC employs doesn't work nowhere. It seems to me that they stick their head in the sand to realities. Now you have an issue about inflation. What is driving inflation? Don't we know they have a global supply chain issue? Don't we know there's a global supply issue? chain issue when a container from China and from parts of the world that are producing goods use the cost 3300 for a 20 foot container now it's twenty thousand dollars don't they know that if they don't know that Mr. Speaker they should read and research before they come to this honorable house and grandstand and stand on pedestal and speak things that are novice in nature the other thing they spoke about fertilizer costs the same thing who manufactures fertilizer where does it come from where does it come from the honorable member spoke about fertilizer costs natural gas prices went up globally aren't you guys checking what is it that you use to make fertilizer then you have to ship it we don't control shipping lines i never knew guyana had its own shipping lines honorable member Ram ramjatan Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, one of the most grotesque things that I just heard, grotesque is the word I use, is the 2% removal of your tolling tax. They say that is for the boys. Mr. Speaker, these people really don't understand what they're talking about. I'm sorry to say, but I can't use the word nonsense in this house, but I'll use another word, Kangalang. 
Kangalang is the word. I don't know if the, 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 the Kangalang, it's a Kangalang analysis. 2%, 2%, you know who pays that? Is the man who clean in the trench? Is the man who get a little fine job? 2% is from the people them. Listen to me, the honorable member, Mr. Ramjatan, honorable member, you yourself do not understand this matter. You yourself do not understand this matter, so do not speak about it. This bunker strategy that you all employing to stick your head in the sand to realities, it don't work. It don't work at all. Mr. Speaker, I want to also address, she raised some other issues about corruption and goal. Corruption, let me first talk about the goal issue. So they talk about goal rise in their time in office. Yeah, goal production rise because they had large producers. Check who were the small and medium-sized miners. What were their output? Check what were their output? Those are the guys that go into the village economy and buy the ration, buy the parts, get the workers, those are the guys, Mr. Speaker, I'm not guessing this. I was in the industry, I know how it operates. I was in the industry, and I'm saying to you, they boast about that. I wonder, Mr. Speaker, I wonder if, because they thought that the, the production rise under them, they had the God-given right to sell out all of the gold that we had in the resort of the Bank of, of Guyana. $25 billion worth of gold they sold out and spent out the money. And you talk about... Right, and, and did not put the money in the reserve. They spent it out too. The worst part of it, they spent out the money and contracted the asset base of the Bank of Guyana. Contracted the asset base. I want to say, Mr. Speaker, they talk about bauxite. Bauxite. The Honourable Member Vikram is here. He will tell you that they run loose all out of the country, Mr. Speaker. We had to bring in AGM and Troy to to counter that putting over a thousand people out of job. They did that, and they're talking about the extractive industry and managing. I'm sorry, but the honorable member seems to have mistaken from the house. The honorable member spoke and mistake from the house. I want to address them. There is a calculation that the honorable member made. There was a calculation that the honorable member made about the withdrawal from the NRF fund. Mr. Speaker, let me make it clear. There is $126 billion in the revenue, in the tables of the revenue in the estimates, that is from the NRF. Her calculation that we have to pay, uh, that is debt on our people, is actually a useless calculation. Absolutely useless calculation, right? Let me say this to you, Mr. Speaker. That NRF money forms part of the total budget. In the total budget, there are massive amounts of infrastructure work in energy, infrastructure, air transport, in river transport, in education, in health. The money goes into projects that are delivering to the people. And she talked about debt burden. Mr. Speaker, again, she has not read this, this document that the Honorable Minister presented. In this document, it is 38.7% debt burden. Your GDP to, your, your debt to GDP ratio measures your, your debt burden. And it's 38% lowest in this hemisphere. So I don't know where they get their numbers from, but they come here and they speak and they grandstand. The worst, the worst I've heard this morning is that the Honorable Minister, Dr. Ashni Singh, doesn't understand poverty. That is what I heard this morning. Mr. Speaker, I reject this nonsense. I don't want to use that word again. But I reject this in the strongest term. Mr. Speaker, the budget process does not only rest with the Minister of Finance. It's every single member here, here, puts estimates down and they review it. We consult with everybody and the budget process is a massive one, it takes months. And everybody here would have to recommend programs to the Minister of Finance who then puts it together and then come back and discuss it. And that is how we move forward. So to so say that the Honorable Minister doesn't understand poverty, I tell you I reject it. But what I want to say that I understand poverty, Mr. Speaker, and I'm not ashamed of it. I, dear that in there, went to school bare feet, hungry, 
I understand poverty. And I walked with the Minister of Finance and helped him prepare this budget. So they cannot come here and lecture anybody about understanding poverty. I do. And I wear it as a badge of honor because it has crafted the man that I am. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about the issue of sectoral performance that the Honorable Member raised. And these are only my opening remarks, Mr. Speaker. 9% reduction in agriculture. Again, the bunker strategy is at work again. They stick their head on the stand. The, this particular sector was ravaged by a flood. Crops were destroyed. Thousands of acres of rice land was destroyed. Cane land was destroyed. Personal property was, was destroyed. People garden, crops were destroyed. Livestock. The goat, sheep, fowl. I was on the ground. I saw it with his very two eyes. That is what affected the sector. See, if the sector reduced by 9.1%, it means that is the effects of that horror, horrific flood that we had for two months straight. So this bunker strategy where they continue to, to, to employ, to stick their head in the sand and find two small rabbit holes to run down and argue, doesn't work. The people in this country felt the flood. They know you cannot fool people anymore. This is a time of an information age. The information age is that everything is on social media now people see for themselves. Right. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about another matter, another matter that the Honorable Member Jurita raised about corruption. Now, they talk about corruption, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if it's pot kettle, pot telling the kettle, the bottom black or so. But I am saying to you, Mr. Speaker, that if they are the highest form of corruption, I will explain to you. If you check this same document here, this same document, you will see a part that deals with the public debt. And in that, the domestic debt, and the domestic debt, we had to issue debentures for the people who are listening across the country who are interested. Debenture is a debt instrument. Our government had to put in debt instrument to securitize on the bank overdraft that we found at the Bank of Guyana that we are now correcting. It is the highest form of corruption where they draw money from the Bank of Guyana and, draw and carry up the, 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 the overdraft. And we, our government, had to fix it. That is in addition, that is, this is what the Honorable Member and the former Minister of Finance, who is not here, but they have a sitting member of the former cabinet here. Mr. Ramjatan is here. You have some more there. They were around the cabinet when they were spending out this money from the Bank of Guyana, writing checks and driving up an overdraft. It's either they didn't knew and they didn't say nothing, or they just didn't care. Mr. Speaker, I want to use some time to look at the infrastructure that this budget put forward. Mr. Speaker, last year, Public Works had $44.6 billion in the budget, the original plus the supplement. This year, that figure has grew, the envelope for, for, for infrastructure has grew to 96 billion, and out of that, 88 billion is for capital works, capital formation, capital works that would help people. Now, I heard this morning again, someone said, I think maybe it's Vince Roy, that this budget is not a people-centered budget. It's for the boys. Mr. Speaker, in this budget, again, if they actually took the time to read it, they will see $73.2 billion allocated to the health sector. The health sector, that is designed, everything about the health sector is designed to help our people. Healthcare is free in Guyana from the public side. Everything here is designed to help people. It also has $74.4 billion for the education sector. Everything in the ministry, the ministry of Education is designed to help students become productive members of society. Everything, every vaccine, all that, all that money is geared directly towards delivering to the people. It is a direct interface with the population set. So for them to say that is the private sector big budget, again, it's weak at best. Look at the housing sector. 
Our government put $12.4 billion in the housing sector to deal with housing for people so that the poverty that we have, that, that one, the honorable member spoke of, is addressed. That people who are squatting can get a house, lot and build a house. The money is there for that. $3.1 billion for Amerindian and hinterland development. That is money directly to people to deal with projects directly will benefit their lives. Mr. Speaker, for them to say that the budget is not people-centered is hogwash. So on the infrastructure side, Mr. Speaker, we have the first thing I want to talk about is on the energy side, where we are putting a lot of money, $29 billion in energy infrastructure. Apart from aviation, transport, and road infrastructure, we have the energy infrastructure. The energy infrastructure will see works in the hinterland community. All of the satellite generation companies, the seven satellite generation companies that we have in Madia, in Mabaruma, um, Linden, Letem, all of those places will see improved generating assets so that they can get more reliable power. We will have build out of the Kumu and the Mokomoko as well as the Kato hydro projects. There are monies inside of there that deals directly with people in those regions. We have also $1.1 billion for solar farms. Mr. Speaker, we are putting 33 megawatts of power grid tie solution in Essequibo, Barbison, and Linden to tie into the grid. That is money, 85 million US, that was locked up under the APNU. Our government unblocked that money from the, from the Norway funds. And that is going directly to reduce cost of power to people. Mr. Speaker, we have $20.8 billion going to gas the energy project as an energy infrastructure that is designed to cut electricity by half. And that, that Mr. Speaker, is a long story to tell. They came to this house, the opposition, to block that very project, denying Guyanese people cheaper energy, denying businesses cheaper energy. Now, people should see what the APNU is doing. They are trying to stop development in Guyana. We will not allow it in the People's Progressive Party government. We will not allow it. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about some of the big projects that we have, but also some of them that deals directly with the community. We have a lot of highways that we are re redoing. Let's just take one for example, the Palmyra to Crabwood Creek, 8.3 billion. Mr. Speaker, that will employ a lot of sand. You have to get a lot of sand, a lot of loom, a lot of stone. You have to get a lot of workers, machine, machine operators. A lot of people in Region 6 would benefit from this project. It's a massive project and it's a big spend. And it will increase the travel uh, increase the, 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 the road and reduce the travel time. Mr. Speaker, the Linden to Mubua Road. Only last week, Friday, I was on that road, Mr. Speaker. I went and checked. People, there was $6 billion in the budget for that. Mr. Speaker, that road, thousands of persons use it to traverse, bring goods, carry goods, go to the forestry concession or the mining concession. That road will, is in this budget. It is designed to help people. It is designed to benefit people. Mr. Speaker, $3.4 billion in hinterland roads. Hinterland Road, Mr. Speaker, the flood destroyed most of this infrastructure. The beginning of the year, when some of the APN, you people still sporting, I was on the Peruni Road, destruction on the road. The people there want road that I was there. These monies are to help people. Miners can't work. Forestry people can't work. This road, Mr. Speaker, is vital. I was on the Peruni Road. Monies are in there to help it now, to fix it. Because when mining and forestry doesn't um, have proper access, the, the value to, towards the economy is reduced because people can't access the land, they can't produce. Simple. Mr. Speaker, there is $4.1 billion for bridges, 32 bridges from Kurapakari to Letta. 32 bridges will be built using Ashto designs, international design. That is helping people. Development. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Demerara Harbor Bridge. I just want to talk a little on that. The new Demerara Harbor Bridge, $21.1 billion. The amount of stone, cement, concrete, cables, cable trays, wires, 
floating barges, workers that we need to build that bridge is humongous. That project alone will see the entire region, three region for revenue with economic activity. That single project will we, we, we revenue with economic activity and, and, the, and the benefits, the benefits that it will derive. If anybody is to take a calculation of the amount of wait time that persons have to do when they come into in the morning and going back in the afternoon, the economic loss to the, the, the country is huge. This bridge is not just fixing travel problems, it's fixing other social problems. The time that you take an hour and a half to get to, you could be spending it with your child, teaching them some homework. But we have to spend it on the road and traffic jams. This bridge, Mr. Speaker, is a big thing for our government, and we are getting it done. We are not the, 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 we are not the government that promises things and don't get it done. We are getting it done. Mr. Speaker, there is a figure of $15.2 billion in this budget for urban and community roads. Mr. Speaker, if you walk this entire country, every single community, every single community, roads are being built. The man in his house sometimes doesn't care if we have five or six big hotels. It doesn't bother him. He cares when he drives out on the road. He have a good road, his drains are clean. There, you get proper electricity. These are the kitchen table issues we are fixing here. This community road uh, spending here will see massive amounts of roads. Last year, Mr. Speaker, which is 2021, we built out 339 roads with $8.89 .8 billion under this program. This year, it's $15.2 billion. You will see more roads in more community, in more housing schemes that have been left dilapidated for years under the APNU. They didn't go back. Again, they and their bunker strategy, they sit in their high offices, they come out and they grandstand and they talk things that they, they don't um, have any responsibility for. But we are getting it done. Mr. Speaker, one of the things that we suffered in the past is flooding when the river end up into people's lands. This year, we have $5 billion in the budget and the people of Grove will benefit. The people of La Resource will benefit. The people of Maria's Delight will benefit. The people in Zelandia will benefit. The people in Leguan will benefit. The people in Essex and Bengal will benefit. Because when the, water, when the water comes in, it destroys the land because it's salt water, you can't plant anything anymore. If they have some chicken, it destroys the livestock too. We are fixing these things. These things, as the, the honorable member on the other side said, it's not people centered. These projects are designed directly to help people. Directly to help people, Mr. Speaker. So for them to come here and talk about it's not a people-centered budget, I say again, it's weak at best. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about river transport. We have $2.1 billion in this budget for a new vessel. Now, some of the opposition members have never been to Region 1. They never know where is Morawana. They don't know Kumaka and Port Kaituma. But when you go there, the people of the community of the region want this ferry and they want the stelling fixed. This spending is directly will benefit the people. It will carry more goods and it will carry refrigerated goods. This project will benefit them and it will end up rehabilitating the, the stellings to bring it up to standard. Mr. Speaker, the people of Leguan and Bartica and Fort Island have suffered because of those stellings that they have there. In this budget, there's $456 million for, to deal with those projects. The people of Leguan, every time there is a rice crop and they have to move it off the island to sell it, sell it it's a problem with loading. You cannot load certain weight on the stelling because it, it, the, the members are weak. This will help that. Because if you carry less amount on the, on, on the counters that, and the trucks that they move, it carries up the freight costs. I have dealt with this matter personally, Mr. Speaker. This spending directly benefits the people of Leguan. In Bartica, the same thing. The same thing applies to Bartica. The stelling is old, and we have to get a contractor to finish the work there to benefit the people of Bartica. Mr. Speaker, moving on the river transport, it moves tremendous amount of people. From Parika to Supanam, Parika to Leguan, Parika to Wakina, Parika to Bartika. That leg there, we have a number of vessels. 
This budget has 562 million to keep those vessels in operational mode, to repair them. Some of the vessels we have since the 50s, you can't find parts for them. When they broke down, you can't find parts for them. Honorable Member, to keep you in operational mode, we need an extension. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask that my Honorable Member be given five minutes to conclude his presentation. Thank you, Thank sir. you, Honorable Member. You may conclude in five minutes. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I want to touch on two more projects. The first one is the CGI. Now, in our budget for, for, for air transport, we have about $2 billion set aside. Now, the CGI and my honorable colleague, Honorable Bishop Juanil Edgel, has said, if anything is to go wrong with the project, went wrong with that project. Repeating his words. And it is true, it is true, and there is evidence that it is true. So for the Honorable Member Jurita to come here and say, and talk about corruption, that project is rife with corruption. We found 1,500 defects when we pick up that project. It wasn't moving. 1,500 defects. We are modernizing the airport. And that, again, will ease when travelers are coming in and when they're going out. That spending is directly benefiting people, Guyanese people, and those who come to our shores. Mr. Speaker, the media from time to time will report incidents and sometimes accidents in the interland. Because when aircraft land on these airstrips, they blow out the wheel or something, or they have an excursion. In this budget, there's 600 million for four airstrips, capital wars. Karasparu, we had to do special intervention. The Honorable Minister Paul Insukai, special intervention to get goods into Karasparu for the people of Karasparu. This budget is addressing that airstrip. That is directly benefiting the people of Karasparu. Ikeriku Bottom, the same situation, Mr. Speaker. Itering Bang, the same situation. And Peruma, the same situation. These monies are designed to spend to help with getting goods into these communities so that our Amerindian brothers and sisters can make sure that they get goods as well. They get fuel to run their operation. If they don't work, this, it stifles these communities. Mr. Speaker, the last thing that I want to talk about is the Demerara Harbor Bridge, the current one. The Demerara Harbor Bridge has seen neglect under the APNU government, utmost neglect, like a stepchild. Our government, when we came into power, we have put monies to have that bridge running. On any given day, thousands of people move across that bridge, thousands of commuters. Whether they're taking passengers or they're taking goods, because Region 3 and Region 2 depend on moving into the city and backward. We have $946 million for that bridge in 2022. We have some issues with the pontoons. We have some issues with Span 9 and 10. And this money will assist in making this bridge operational so that it don't break and cause disruption of commerce in between Region 2 and Region 3 and Region 4. Because the people from Essequibo also bring over the produce to bring to Georgetown too. So, Mr. Speaker, with that being said, I want to close my arguments and my comments on 2022 budget. That is a template for industrialization of Guyana. The budget reflects every aspect of society needs and it addresses them. This budget addresses the needs and our commitments to our international uh, partners and international bodies like CARICOM and the UN Agenda 2030, it addresses those needs and the requirements that are placed on our country. And lastly, the budget caters for the effects of global warming on floods. It has in it mitigation and ad adaptation measures, and it addresses the matter of the environment. And I want to close by commending this budget to this house for approval. Thank you very much.